morning and welcome to St. James's on this sixth Sunday at Easter. Service of morning prayer. We welcome our bishop and his canon with us this morning. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful God, we have been very constrained when my days are called sheep. We have followed our devices and desires of our hearts. We have offended against the light of the laws. We have left undone the saints who are to the We have left the saints who are to the We have left the saints who are to the But thou, the Lord, have mercy on us. Spare thou those who possess this The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. O Lord, open thou our lips. And thou shalt show forth thy grace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
A reading from 1 Peter. Now who will harm you if you're eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, in which who in former times did not obey, when God waited patient, patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved enough, saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with the angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On the day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning, St. James's. A happy sixth Sunday of Easter to you all. 
I, I know that the, uh, the service bulletin says that I was to officiate this, but uh, thank you, Father, for agreeing to do it. My head is rattling because I've been talking all morning long. <laughs> it's good to actually sit and pray in a slightly different way than one does when one is leading worship. Uh, this is a beautiful day, and I'm glad to be here with y'all. Uh, I, I know that we got started a little late, uh, and I appreciate the fact that you were willing to make allowances for that. I told the earlier services that uh, I was told to keep my homily short, uh, and now I want to keep it short because it's late and we all want to go home, right? <laughs> but you never know when you put a microphone in front of a preacher. I do promise to do my best. So I begin this, with this story, and as I told the other two services, I want to remind you that it is perfectly fine to laugh with or even at your bishop. Okay, just say. So I start with this story. A former professor at Eastern Kentucky University, a fellow by the name of Carl Hurley, he tells a story about trying to throw away a trash can. So think about that, throwing away a trash can. He says, that, he says that it is the one thing that the trash removal people simply do not like to pick up. He tells the story this way. I once set an old, rusted-out garbage can out on the street one morning, thinking that the trash collector would understand that it needed to be thrown away. When I came back that afternoon, the can was stacked up with the rest of my empty trash cans. Well, the next week I put it out again, and this time I turned it upside down so that they could see that the bottom had several holes rusted out, and that they would, they would then need to know that it was to be thrown away. When I came home, it was turned right side up and stacked next to the rest of my empty cans again. So the next week I took a sledgehammer, and I beat that can in pretty good, flattened it, knocked it all out and then I left it out front. When I came home, not only was it stacked back up with the other cans, but the garbage collector had beaten it back into shape. <laughs> and so, Hurley said finally, and so I did the only thing that I could do. I went to the hardware store and I bought a heavy duty chain and a padlock and I chained the old can to a large tree in my front yard and sure enough, that night someone stole it. <laughs> We do have surprising notions on the meaning of value, don't we? As we have arrived at this, the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter, and as, uh, as we have, as I have been moving through this season, I've been thinking a lot about this notion of value. I've been thinking a lot about what Jesus values, about what God values. And our reading from John 14 today speaks directly to all of this. Because these words of Jesus, like so many of our Savior's words, these words talk about what Jesus really values in the words of how much he loves us and how he loves us. We value what we love. We love what we value. The gospel passages that we read in the first three weeks of Easter, in weeks one, two, and three, that, well, those gospel passages are all resurrection stories. We hear of the empty tomb, and we hear of encounters with the risen Christ. And those passages, well, they show the power of Jesus and the love that he has for us as he is cutting through fear, as he is cutting through doubt, through pain, through loneliness. They show us that Jesus that Jesus is even more than what his followers thought he was on that day, that, tri that triumphal entry on Palm Sunday when he came into Jerusalem. He's even more than they thought he was that day, and that he is certainly much more than they feared was possible when the sun went down on that first Good Friday. Then on the, the fourth and the middle week of this season of Easter, we are given the language of Jesus as Good Shepherd. Jesus uses these words, these images, to remind us that the relationship that he has with us has value in his eyes. That all the glory that he has, all the glory of God in God's fullness, all of that value that is God is made known in the value of God's loving relationship with us. Jesus knows us each by name. God spoke us into being at our creation, and the ongoing breath of God animates us throughout eternity. 
Then we get to last week today and next Sunday, weeks five, six, and seven of Easter Tide. And as we have arrived here in this, these three weeks, our gospel passages shift to the evening before the crucifixion, to the Last Supper, and to what biblical scholars refer to as our Lord's farewell discourse. And okay, so I get the fact that they call it the farewell discourse because it's the last night before he dies. It's the last night he's with them in his earthly body. He's about ready to go away in a particular way. But I really do think that this phrase, his farewell discourse, I think that's an an unfortunate choice of words. Because if you look at what he says in 14, 15, 16, 17, because if you look and you read and you think and you pray about what he's saying, the words that we hear are all about how much Jesus is going to stay with us, how much he loves us. He's going to stay with us because he loves us. And because he loves us, he's going to find a way to stay with us. We learn how much God loves us, how much value we have in the eyes and the heart of God. It is as if Jesus is reminding us that no matter how bad things are, we are never alone. We always have him. He always understands us, and he will always love us. I'm reminded of the story of a woman who approached a Little League baseball game one afternoon, and she asked a young boy in the dugout what the score was, and the boy said, oh, it's 18 to nothing. We're behind. And she says, oh my, I bet you're terribly discouraged. And he said, why should I be discouraged? We haven't had had a chance to bat yet. (laughs) Somehow I do not think that that particular sense of optimism was present with the disciples late in Holy Week. But Jesus wanted it to be. As Jesus speaks the words recorded by St. John in chapter 14, the Thursday evening meal has concluded. Jesus has washed the feet of his disciples and he has looked at them and he has said, he has said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. And it is then that Jesus launches into a sermon that perhaps is only rivaled in Scripture in its greatness by the Sermon on the Mount, which we find in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. And like that sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, this one here in John 14 and following, like that sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, with its blessings and descriptions of how to lead a fruitful life in the love of God, this one is all about how God values and loves each person that has ever been created. In the first part of chapter 14, as we heard last Sunday, Jesus proclaims that he is the way, that he is the destination and the path, that we are drawn to Jesus through Jesus. And today, in the second part of the chapter, Jesus proclaims that we will not be orphaned. We are never left to fend for ourselves. That his love for us is always there. The path, the way, never fades. Then again, in his earlier comments, Jesus proclaims that he is the truth. That he is an unshakable foundation for us. Not to bring false hope. Not to bring false hope. Not to pretend, but to bring wisdom, to bring peace. And today, Jesus assures us that to know him, to know his truth, to know that he is truth, to study his words, to use his life as an example for our own life, to know Jesus, well, to know Jesus is to truly know God, to know the true love of God. And in his earlier words, we heard that Jesus is the life. When God created the world and all that is in it, including us, God looked at everything, and God's response to everything is, it is good. God, Jesus, loves life. Jesus loves and values our life. You know, Jesus loved a good party. Look at it. He went to a wedding feast at Cana. He was always eating at people's houses. He was like throwing parties for 5,000 people he didn't even know. I like this guy. I'm from Louisiana. I like a good party. I could hang with Jesus. Jesus loves life, wants us to love life. And today, Jesus declares that he abides with us, with us and in us. 
He lives our life with us. He wants to because he loves us. Today, of course, is Mother's Day. And for those of us who have been fortunate enough to have had loving mothers, we know that if there is anything on earth that even comes close to reflecting the perfect love that God has for us, it is the love of mother for child. I'm fortunate that I still have my own mother with me. Uh, in fact, my, my mom moved in with my wife and me several years ago after my dad died. My mother has always been a blessing to me, and she keeps me grounded. She keeps perspective on things for me. The day that I was elected Bishop of Virginia, which was last June, it's coming up in a year now. It's amazing how time flies. The day that I was elected Bishop of Virginia, I was in Indianapolis on a work trip, and I called her not long after the results were announced, and I told her what had happened, and as you can imagine, she was overjoyed. She was just screaming with excitement, and we had tears and laughter and all manner of fun. And then as I was about to hang up the phone, she said, and do not forget to stop on your way home tomorrow to buy some milk. <laughs> she loves me, and she keeps me grounded. She keeps things in perspective. Several years ago, Irma Bombeck. Now, many of you in this room probably know who Irma Bombeck is, but some of our younger uh, friends may not know that name. So please, uh, after, not while I'm preaching, but later, Google Irma Bombeck and read some of her stuff. If you've not read her stuff, you'll love it. Several years ago, Irma Bombeck wrote an article about motherhood, and perhaps some of you are familiar with it. She wrote this. For the first four or five years after I had children, I considered motherhood a temporary condition, not a calling. It was a time of my life set aside for exhaustion and long hours. It would pass. Then one afternoon with three kids in tow, as I came out of the supermarket pushing a cart with all four wheels going in completely different directions, as I came out of the supermarket with three kids in tow, my toddler son, got away from me. Just outside the door, he, he ran to a machine holding bubble gum in a glass dome. And in a, in a voice that could have shattered glass, he shouted, gimme, gimme. I told him that I would gimme him what for if he did not stop shouting and get in the car. As I physically tried to pry his body from around the bubble gum machine, he pulled the entire thing over. Glass and balls of bubble gum went all over the parking lot. We had now attracted a crowd. <laughs> Donna Reed, another name to Google if you don't know that name. Donna Reed would have brushed away his tears and granted him absolution on the spot, but I was not Donna Reed. I told him he would never, ever see another cartoon as long as he lived, and if he did not control his temper, he was going to be making license plates for the state. <laughs> he, tried, he tried to stifle his sobs as he looked around at the staring crowd. And then he did something that I was to remember the rest of my life. In his helpless quest for comfort, he turned to the only one he trusted, me. He threw his arms around my knees and he held on for dear life. He had been humiliated, he had been chastised, he had been berated. But still, I was there for him. I was the one he had. The easiest part, Irma Bombeck wrote, the easiest part of being a mother is giving birth. The hardest part is showing up for it each and every day. My siblings in Christ, Jesus shows up for us every single day. He grounds us in love even as he acknowledges the reality around us. Being loved by Jesus means that we can never be rusted out or beaten in. And we can never, ever be given or stolen away. Because we, you and I, we are the beloved of God.
the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand reaffirm that faith in the words of the Apostles. I believe in God. thy mercy upon us. Do thy ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. Thy way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. O God, who has prepared for those who love thee such good things as past man's understanding, pour into our hearts this love toward thee, that we be loving thee in all things, and above all things, we obtain thy promises to succeed all that we can desire. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee to the guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray for all in our congregation who are grieving, in need of care, as well as those who provide care to the grieving, and those in need, especially our Stephen ministry. Please join me in lifting up to God those who have asked for our prayers, especially Lyndon Barnett,
all those in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, and sickness, and any other adversity. In the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the congregation of the clergy of St. David's in Ashburn, St. John's McLean, St. Paul's in Richmond, St. Peter's in Arlington. We give thanks for the lives and ministry of all who celebrate their birthdays this week, especially those who celebrate their birthdays today. Kathy Conrad, Anita Cummins, Kate Jenneret, Sarah Eck, Jeffrey Foster V, Chase Gunter, Dick Miller, Angela Roslin, Mary Michael Stiller, David Turner, and Ted Ucron. We also bless thy holy name for all thy service as part of this life and thy faith and fear, especially Butch Butler, E. Gilmer Miner III, Carol Basol, Junior Taylor Stevens, and Wilkinson, who died recently. And Charles Bennett Molster, Betty Sanford Molster, Stuart Punky G. Christian Jr., and Margaret Peggy R. Christian, whose memory of the flowers on the altar are given. On this Mother's Day, we give thanks for all of our mothers and for all women who have been mothers and mothering figures. We give thanks for the many gifts, their sacrifices, and their unconditional love. We pray for those whose mothers have died, mothers who have lost children, women who long to be mothers but struggle with infertility or loss, and those who struggle to have painful relationships with their mothers, as well as all who celebrate today. May all of us feel the power and healing grace of thy love and love in our lives. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all thy members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Joy, on behalf of Vestry, welcome our bishop, Bishop Shannon. To remind you, the next week we have another bishop. We have uh, Billy and I will be at the 745 service, which is nice and quiet. At 9 o'clock will be youth confirmation, and at 11 15 will be the adult confirmation and reception. And the following week, we go back to our summer schedule of 8 and 10. And this year, the 8 o'clock service will be outside with the committee or inside in the training. So like last year with the 9 o'clock service, you had to kind of figure out which way you want to go. You don't have to. We're not out there. We're in here. <laughs> we will have church regardless of whether we're here. Call your attention to all the other announcements on the e chimes. And remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. I said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And before we continue, I am, I am aware of the fact that today, Doug's 50th anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood. most awesome things that I get to do as a bishop is to ordain priests, and this falls into that category. Let us pray. O oh God and Father of all, we praise you for your infinite love and in calling us to be a holy people in the kingdom of your Son, Jesus our Lord, who is the image of your eternal and invisible glory, the firstborn among many brethren and the head of the church. We thank you that by his death he has overcome death and having ascended into heaven, has poured gifts abundantly upon your people, making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry and the building up of his body. May our God and Father of all exalt you, Doug, in the midst of your people. May you offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. 
May you boldly proclaim the gospel of salvation and rightly administer the sacraments of the new covenant. May God continue to make in you a faithful pastor, a patient teacher, and a wise counselor. Grant that in all things that you may serve God without reproach, so that your people may be strengthened, so that God's name may be glorified in all the world. May God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost bless, preserve, and keep you this day and through ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Congratulations.
May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, be upon you this day and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen.